Sexton dominates, Deegan destroys in Washougal. Hey everybody, Walty Wanders, buckle up, strap in, we got a hard hitting, pull no punches, no sugar coating it, no rainbows, no sunshine. It's going to give it to you and give it to you straight. We got a good one to unpackage today. Welcome to the show. I hope everybody's doing great. So let's go ahead and jump back on the Moto Merry Go Round. Today's stop will be Washougal, Washington, as we examine the good, the bad, and maybe even a little bit of the ugly. No, Walty, not the ugly. Only report on rainbows and sunshine. No, somebody's got to blow the lid off this stuff. Thanks, you guys, who continue to support Support this. It's, I, we got to read between the lines and look between the cracks, right? So we can call it how it really is because really what you guys, I hope you understand what they're doing. We're going to break down a little bit of it today. They're spoon feeding this stuff to us. They're spoon feeding a narrative. Moto has been just compartmentalized, watered down, and just poised to be football and playoffs. I mean, everything from the flaggers to the broadcast, a lot of things can be talked about, right? But today we're going to talk a little bit about the racing and the industry, because that's what we do here, right? We got it. We got it. Somebody that's worked in the trenches of this thing. I mean, I love the races. I miss being at the races, man. I, I miss it so much, man. I got to get to some of these rounds because I really miss being the races. But it is kind of cool, I guess, as a YouTuber to show up. But I really enjoyed being in the industry, working with the riders at the teams. Uh, just being part of companies it was rad and i miss it a lot but hopefully someday we'll get back out there i'll probably do super duper in vegas right i want to check this thing out for sure it, camping would be great i don't know what the weather's gonna be like hopefully not too uh, brutal but it would be nice to get out there and camp so we'll see how that one plays out but let's go ahead and start with the booth ricky is back in the booth i Noticed that there was a little bit of controversy how Sexton was mad at Bubba. I'm not talking to you, Bubba. I'm mad at you because you critiqued my riding style. You said that I look down too much and I need to look forward. Well, it's, it might be true. I mean, the reality is, Chase, you're smoking the field. You have a championship now landing in your lap. This season is over. And that brings me back to the booth. Well, I love Ricky. Ricky, I mean, I've worked in the industry when you were, in the, when you were racing. And, I mean, props, bro. You've earned your spot in the booth. That's without a shadow of a doubt. Are you the most liked or polished uh, personality that the, the industry has for the booth? No. No. Bubba is. Bubba definitely is. And I don't think Ricky necessarily likes that. But the reality is this. There's room for, there's enough to go around. There's room for both of these guys. But one of the things I just, I, I noticed this, and I don't know if you guys did. I know there's a lot of my my faithful fans. If you're new, get subscribed, jump into the comments, jump over to the community page, participate in the polling, leave comments there. We do a lot of stuff where we take a lap around the comments, get you guys involved. A lot of you guys follow me at Walty Wanders MX on Insta and inboxing me there. A lot of bench racing with you guys. Dig each and every one of you guys. So I know I don't know if some of my hardcore dudes noticed this or anybody is watching today. But early on, Ricky, you know, I'm back in the booth and and he's basically sugarcoating it. I think we just like, do you think that Hunter could step up and actually be chased? Something like that, right? I mean, they're trying to hype. There's nothing to hype. What really what it should have been. And of course, Ricky's like, yeah, I think he can. I think he can. I mean, there's just so much. You can just see through so much of the stuff, how it's just built to promote, built for television. SMX. Well, you know, back when I raced MX, SMX, you never raced SMX, Ricky. You raced MX and SX, Supercross, Motocross. There was no SMX. But for brand recognition, they continue to say that over and over. But they're trying to hype the season when we all know. And I'm gonna, we're going to get to it here in a second, what really is to look forward to this season. Because the realities are, this is Chase, now this is Chase, this is handed to Chase, and Deegan's just destroying the field. I mean, destroying the field, right? I mean, Chase is destroying the field as well, but it, it, courtesy of Jet. I mean, we all know that he he's fast, and he may, probably could have got in there and mixed it up with Jet. But I, I still don't think so. I think Jet handily beats Chase, and Chase handily beats the rest of the field. But it's been fun seeing these other guys be able to step up and slip into the podium spots. Now we do have the SMX playoff super duper. I don't want to call it SMX. I prefer super duper, super duper. But we're seeing the points now start to shape up. Like Dino out there trying to collect some SMX points. Poor Dino. Like he's, you know, he portrayed Grandpa Earl, right? That was kind of his claim to fame on YouTube. 
like poor dudes pretty much manifested Grandpa Earl on the bike and compared to the dudes he's got to race. I mean, his knee is completely just blown up, jacked up, but he's out there. Why? Because nobody wants to leave a buck on the table. If they want to pay us to race super duper, I'm going to be there. Whew. Which reminds me, let's just get right into it. The, what we have to look forward to now, because this season's over in the 250s and 450s, is we got a couple of weeks now off, and, and we know Eli, Cooper Webb, and Kickstart, Kenny, they all need points, and they are going to show back up, and this will be fun, and I know most of them, it's going to be like pressures, of, of course, there is no real pressure, no, no pressure to win, but they're racers, right? This is, I mean, you're going, it's not like you want to just go out there, I'm just going to try to collect points and have fun, no, you got to go out there and put in finishes. Why, you ask? Well, of course, I'm going to tell you. Because when you get to SMX, you, the intensity is going to have to be there. So you need to bring the intensity now, right away. You know, Dilla, it's, it's game on. Your first race back. Yeah, sure, maybe the, work out the cobwebs the first race, race first moto a little bit. But for the most part, you need to start getting to race pace quick because when SMX comes around, it's on. Now, the good news for these guys is Jet sideline too. And I don't think Jet's not doing any more outdoors. We won't see him to super duper. But Jet's the, you know, the chosen one, the Moto Messiah, the, you know, he's the industry darling. He's an alien on the bike. I really believe even compromise this dude still still has pretty much the is a favorite to win it all. But that's what we have to look forward to, man. In my opinion, let me know. I could be wrong. Leave in the comments below. I'd love to hear from you guys. The reality is this. This is what we have to look forward to now is these guys coming back and seeing if it gets interesting and watching some stories. But Ricky, and I love you, Ricky, like I was going to say, they're kind of trying to hype up a season that's really over. And I watch at Unadilla, watch what's going to happen because I see so many things. Like I always say, don't no sugarcoating it. Seeing Ricky now, no sugarcoating it. I see a lot. One of you guys, one of the subscribers, like, dude, they're ripping off so many of your catchphrases. And that's right. You know, that's cool. That's like, I like it actually. So, Realize this though, Ricky. Ricky was clearly and Weege too, because I know you know in their pre-meeting and their scripts that they pull from. So we got to hype the season because it's over now. Luckily, I mean it's still as a race fan, you're watching, you're tuning in, even to watch somebody you know come dominate. But the reality is this: they will start hyping up this next. These when it comes to Unadilla, Kickstart, Cooper. And Eli, those dudes are going to be the stories, the hot stories of the day. And it should be rad. I think we'll be pull, doing a lot of polling. So if you're new, get subscribed, jump in the comments and participate because we will be doing a lot of polling on the community page of the Walty Wanders MX YouTube channel on where these guys are going to fit in. And that's always fun, right? And then we can take a lap around the comments, get you guys involved with the show. So like I said, if I haven't said it yet, thanks to all my regular dudes. Follow me on uh, Walty Wanders MX on Insta. And a lot of bench racing going on there in the comments with you guys. Um, my regulars are always hitting me up. So right on, man. Dig you guys. The reality is this. We, so we got the 250 podium. Danger spanks him. Vial is just crushed. I mean, this you could just tell. And poor Frenchie. Frenchie, I mean, first of all, Frenchie's voice is so squinky. And I mean, it's a poor guy. I, I mean, this is voice alone. And it's hard to even, you know, understand him with this accent. And it's rad because, like, of course, Will or JT – uh, you know, they'll always ask these questions. So did you find more comfort today on your bike because you've changed some settings because last week and this and that and like Frenchie, he'll just be like, yeah, so I got off to a really good start and uh, everything was going pretty good. And, like doesn't answer the question. You can just tell he's like, uh huh, just finish answering your question because I'm going to say whatever I'm going to say. I'm not even, he never, half the dudes never answer the questions they ask, right? So I, Frenchie though, you could just tell. I mean, he was like, I'm going to, he's like, I'm going to be working during the off season or these other dudes are like, I'm ready for the break. And, and Frenchie, I'm sure will take a little break, but he's like, I'm going to be working. And the reality is this, I just know you can just see it in his eyes. He knows it's over. Well, it is over clearly, but that, you know, he would like to get in there and steal. So he hasn't got a race win yet. And the dude's been the fast qualifier now, what, three times in a row. And it's been right there for him. But Deegan is just, once you get that confidence and the eye of the tiger and that full send and take no prisoners attitude, uh, you know, it's it's hard to beat that. It's, it's just confidence that only comes with winning. You know, if Deegan was out there getting somebody who's owning him every weekend, he would be having a hard time with it too. 
<laughs> guaranteed. So a lot of this is psychological warfare. So a lot of this is actually mental psychological warfare. We know that. And Smoking Joe. Smoking Joe doing what he... Smoking Joe's done, since I can remember, is that late in the season, he decides he wants to race. And um, it's usually too little too late, but the rea it's better late than never. So good job, Smoking Joe. He's a good kid. And I'll tell you one thing about Smoking Joe. He had a pretty heavy accent. Have you noticed that? When he came in, his accents now at times undetectable virtually like you could kind of you can catch it a few times but he's really learned the language quite well frenchy so the 450s the 450s chase pretty much you know he, he's just such this he's, he is built like a brick house i mean this dude and the gazelle of jet lawrence like jet lawrence like dances and he's like an alien and it's like his body's just super slim slim and fit Chase looks like a linebacker. I mean, this dude's thick, right? And it's a good thing he is because the way that dude hit, was hitting the deck, it looks like he's gotten those bugs pretty much out. He's had some tip overs, but we didn't see these nasty body slams like we saw out of him in Supercross a couple of seasons ago. He was just getting worked. If he wasn't as big of a dude, like most riders would just be done. So phenomenal job coming back. And he's going to deliver KTM a championship with his first year with the brand. And I think he's starting to actually now, of course, who wouldn't, that's the one way you want to fix your bike, start winning on it. All of a sudden, it's everything, all those little clickers and stuff start, start to go away, right? So good job for Chase in terms of he's got the season. you got to be in it to win it, but this season's over. The booth trying to hype it. There's not a lot to hype, but I think moving forward to Unadilla, even like the military appreciation uh, thing that we threw at, at Washougal and to all our veterans or anybody attached to service, thank you for your service. I wish I'd seen more people thank the veterans for a service like when you saw the trump uh debate if you did where he's just like i think it was eric trump one of his kids right like, talking they're like dude what is it with these illegals getting subbed up in fancy hotels and our veterans are sleeping under bridges insanity right they're so broken but this isn't a political show it's a moto show but of course, I mean, it's military. Well, it is now political because we did a military appreciation week in Washougal. And it was cool. We had some segments. We heard from some vets doing the vet, you know, rider thing. And they were like, things were dark for me. Things were pretty dark. And then I found the moto and it changed my life. And that's why moto is really special for a lot of us. I mean, I don't care. Once you put on your helmet, you you transform to a superhero. You're someone else. It doesn't matter how you look or what you, whatever. You could be ugly good looking doesn't matter once you strap on your helmet everything changes but i would have loved to seen more of the riders thank our vets i mean i don't who's who's running the show it's military appreciation week i don't think i saw one in fact i did it and i've ap dude you would have been the guy we'll get to you in a second ap because you're the man but i would have liked to seen more riders thank the vets in honor you know military appreciation week a little better than than what we saw the reality is this so, uh ap now a ap looked great he was leading moto one again a poor guy one of you guys were in my in comments on insta we we're talking i'm like dude dude's just always the bridesmaid never the bride but he is clearly the fan favorite i turned on somebody recently um to to the series actually it was my brother we grew up riding and racing um, but he hasn't been following it for a while. And so he's been following this. And he's like, I like that that guy. I'm like, of course, everybody likes it, dude, him, dude. That's AP. That's the cowboy. He's he's like the hillbilly, the good old boy hillbilly, right? He's rich. He's rich hillbilly, though. The dude's cashing in. I mean, he's putting in finishes, dude. And he's looking really, really good. But he, I really liked, of course, AP. Um, a great ride. Like I said, led most of the moto. But it's got to be so crushing. That poor guy, like, ever since like that Supercross win that he threw away that he had on lock, to then, you know, he's sniffing the finish line and Chase just beats him. But, you know, you can just tell AP is definitely, he's just keeping it so real out there. We don't, we used to have a ton of APs back in the day, back in the day when Walty worked in the industry knee deep in the trenches where his blood, sweat and tears and fight, fight, fight. We had all kinds of Aaron Plessingers. Most of the field. We only had a couple corporate guys thanking the sponsors after the race. Most of them like, what's up? Throwing down out here. This is how we're doing it. Like being themselves, right? And that's what Moto was really rad. Video games, movies, all kinds of stuff. Now, it's not getting that kind of play. It's just watered down. It is what it is. So that's what's so rad. If we lost, if we didn't have AP, 
heck, we don't have any other than Danger. Danger's a character, but AP, because he's just got the mullet, he doesn't even look like a moto rider. That's the thing about, about AP. Like, if you, can you imagine hanging out with somebody and, and you're, you don't, or whatever, you don't, you're not in the moto and you're, you meet Aaron Plessinger. I asked my friend Aaron, whatever, oh, well, what, how's it going, Aaron? What do you do for a living? He's like, you know, I ride dirt bikes, you know? It's like, oh, really? I mean, I figured you for, like, you, you were a farmer or something like that. How oh, cool, dirt bikes, huh? That's what they do, call it dirt bikes, you guys riding the dirt. So, you know, it's really rad about AP. I love AP. It's been just phenomenal. But let's move our boy. Our boy, Ando. El Hombre, fan of the show. Ando. <laughs> Props, dude. Props. She got out there and ran up front, too. Looked really good. Now, Ando is not the Ando of old. Ando, I'm just going to call it like I see it, brother. <sighs> Ando used to be a pretty thin guy, too. But he's kind of like Dino. He's kind of grown into his his big body, right? He's a big dude now. He's like super big dude. And he's not like Chase Sexton big. He's like big, like Weston Pike, D Dean Wilson big. But Ando's still got tons of speed. He used to have this really, you know, that hang it out, you know, Jersey Untucked style. You saw little glimpses of kind of that Anderson of the past, kind of just doing some Ando things on the bike. But it was rad to see Ando get up on the podium, you know, and like you said, I mean, it's got it's it's rad because these dudes are getting paid for podiums. I mean, podiums are huge, huge, huge. So it was rad to see Ando back, but he just isn't quite there. He's he, he needs to turn it up another notch. But listen, at this stage in his career, I think, Ando, you've got to be happy logging these podiums still i i just i know i don't know what you're saying behind closed doors if you're like i think i could still win or if you're now playing the long game like okay i think if i just kind of do stay in my zone i could probably ride for x more years based on salaries i can make x amount of more money and you know just take advantage of that but if you go out there and try to like go for wins and just cartwheel it and end your career because you're not bouncing back up like you were in the beginning and final thoughts, I come to you as a friend, as a content creator, as a moto guy, wants to see you not only win on the track, off the track. Understand the waters you're swimming in now? Shark infested. Washougal, welcome to the swimming pool. You delivered. It was a decent race. I actually wish I could have been there. Washington State, usually a drizzly mess, but in the summer times, absolutely beautiful. A hot day for Washougal, for sure. But next up, we're going to be moving to Unadilla and bringing back Kickstart. Eli and possibly Cooper Webb it might get interesting, so buckle up and strap in. Until then, Walty will be here to blow the lid off it every step of the way. Because it's not only what we need, it's in fact what we deserve. If you appreciate the content, I want to humbly ask you to give the video a like, subscribe to the channel, leave a comment below. I'd love to hear from you. Social media links in the description of this video if you'd like to follow me there. Along with links to channels I've appeared on, I think you might enjoy. If you enjoyed this video, you're going to love the next video, and there's an easy subscribe icon for your convenience. As always, thank you for your time. Don't go over the bars. God bless, and I'll see you on the next video.